Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to paint uh, using a brayer. And our inspiration is Mark Roscoe. So I'm going to use these brayers to do um, some quick paint studies um, with different colors. And so this is Bristol board. This first one, I'm going to use um, a light. Phthalo blue, um, yellow ochre, and ultramarine blue light. And then I'll probably pull in some other colors, maybe some washes. Okay. I'm going to mix these two. No, change my mind. Okay. So normal, and I did this completely wrong, but normally when you're printmaking, you put out, they call it a bead of, of ink or a line, kind of the same width as your brayer, okay? And then I usually roll through it, but then it kind of gets stuck, right? So then I roll, I keep switching directions back and forth. You don't want, I put a little too much paint down there. You want to roll it back and forth until the surface, it's kind of hard to see on here, but the surface of the ink, it's got these little tacky marks. They should be even. It should look like um, the surface of, of the ocean if it's calm. Okay, so roll, and then I'm going to do. Okay, that one's, okay, so this one came out uneven, which I like. Okay, so I got that. Now I'm going to um, mix a little bit of yellow ochre in there. So I'm doing a study in blue with some yellow ochre, which is going to give me sort of this um, celadon green color that I like. Okay, again, I make a line of paint. rolling it back and forth so to, until those tacky marks look even and I've got a fairly even coat of paint on my brayer. Okay, then I'm gonna start by just spontaneously rolling different sections of this color. Another thing I like, to, and you have to keep, um, you're gonna roll paint out and then you're going to have to reload your brayer once it starts getting too thin. Another thing I like to do is I just tap it straight down and I get these nifty little lines. Okay. Um, let's see if I can, I can scratch through like Scrafito. I don't see that one very much. I'll do more of that as I go along. Okay, now, and then I am not going to bother to clean my brayer off in between. I'm just going to let the colors mix. If you want to keep colors pure, you either need to wash your brayer or I think, um, like a wipe would be better. If you rinse it and you don't get it really dry, you're gonna um, get water. It's gonna be all drippy drip. So I don't like that. So if I wanted to clean that off, I could use a wipe or a damp paper towel. Okay, now I'm gonna go to, um, 
what is this, an ultramarine blue light and see what I get. So I can play with some of them having more of one color than the other. See what the difference is. Could go sideways, I suppose. Don't tend to do that. Okay, I could go sideways. Um, all right, now I'm going to show you creating a piece of transfer paper. Another way of getting rid of ink on your roller is to have a piece of paper off to the side. I don't have one, so I'm going to use my class roster and just get rid of that excess ink, okay? All right, so now I'm going to use some of this. Um, this is an open acrylic. So it has a lot, open just means it has something in it that it has a longer drying time, longer manipulation time, um, which if I'm gonna make this transfer paper is, is good because um, like if it was a really hot day and I rolled out a thin layer of this paint, it might be dry too soon to do any transfer work. Okay, so now I'm rolling a thin layer of that on this sandwich paper. And you kind of have to be spontaneous with this because I cannot see completely through. So I'm just gonna make, oops. Oh dear. Okay, well, maybe I need a narrower sheet of paper. Okay, so narrower sheet of paper. Scribble, scribble. Why that instead of just dry brushing over it? Because I'm trying to show you different techniques. So don't have to do this. Um, I'm just showing in different techniques. Okay not working so well for me today. All right, now I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna do some white and I have two different whites. I've got a zinc white, which should be more transparent and I've got a titanium white. So I'm gonna test out the difference. I don't use zinc very often. I want to see how transparent this is going to be. And of course, some of it's mixed with that open, but I'm just going to let it happen. Okay, so now I could come back. And with my palette knife, I could scrape out a section. Okay, now I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to see the different, the titanium white should be. less transparent. 
Okay, we need some contrast here. I could bring in some charcoal pencil if I want. So really just playing around with these studies to see what effects you can get. I'm gonna go over with that transparent zinc again. It's not as transparent as I thought it would be. Okay, now I'm going to... I have a question. Yep. If you wanted it to be more transparent, would you have added water or would you um, added something else to make it more transparent? Well, I'm gonna do that right now. So now I'm using a golden fluid acrylic. I've added to this uh, phthalo blue, I've added some water and I'm gonna go over some areas So now I can start painting, doing all of the layering techniques that we've been going over. So that changes it fairly significantly. Still keeping it in mostly the blue cool range with a little bit of that yellow ochre. Okay, now I'll try, Louise, I'll try that zinc with a little bit more water and try and do a transparent wash with that. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna... Okay, the thing with the charcoal is then it starts bleeding like paint. Let me see. Yep, that, I mean, that works, it's pretty subtle. Okay, there's more I could do, but I'm going to stop here. I am now going to go to canvas and I can use the same color palette or if you have suggestions for another one you'd like to see, let me know right now and then I'll, I'll get going. I have a question. Yes. Did Rothko do layers of different colors? Because it looked like they were pretty solid. It didn't look like he had mixed his colors. I think they were like thin washes. You know, so, there though, was, I think it's pretty subtle. I think you have to look really closely and you will see some other colors showing through, but it's not solid like, um, in a coloring book. Pretty subtle. Okay, 
color scheme anyone or maybe I should just stick with the same one since that's what's on my palette. What? How about something in the warm, uh, like a deep red and gold? Okay. All right. So let me get a new sheet of palette paper here. So you said deep red, could yellow ochre count? Is yeah, that I'll a just... deep red? <laughs> no, no, no. I meant like, can I do yellow ochre with oh. it? Yeah. With it? Okay. Whatever. Okay. So here's, I'm going to just put out what I have because I, I might not have everything you want. Here's the red. Uh, yellow. Indian red hue, cad orange, burnt sienna. Give me your opinion. Um, the yeah, Indian yellow, and okay. yeah. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the Indian yellow. That's going to be my sort of my background color that. I'm thinking is maybe going to show through. And then I'm going to build from there. Now, so the first, the first ones, and you can do tons of these, um, and you very quickly get the feel of layering and transparency and how colors interact. And then I save these and later I cut them up and use them to make cards, you know, um, or hang it like it is. So once you get comfortable, then, you know, you can go to a canvas um, of your choosing, I mean, in terms of size, and it's going to look different on the canvas because of the texture. So, and Billy, I think you need to remute or somebody needs to remute themselves. I think it's maybe Louise or Billy. I'm hearing background noise. Okay. So here we go. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. I mean, you can roll it any way you want. Okay, I need more. I like how it overlaps and then you get shapes, kind of a, a grid that you can play off of and work with. You have some areas that are darker, some that are more transparent. So there's a little bit of a window here and here that I like. I'm gonna see if I can keep that there. Okay, so there's, I'll call it my foundation. Okay, cad, cad orange. And because they're kind of similar, I'm just going to mix it right on there. Not going to get fussy about this. Again, rolling till my paint is even, and then. I'm just kind of doing this spontaneously, not overthinking it. Okay, another thing I can do, but I have to work kind of fast, is once I put paint down, if I want to add water, I could then, I could blend it into my background. It's not doing that much for me right now. Okay, but you could do that. 
actually, I'll just soften up some areas. Okay, now I'm going to go, let's see, you wanted red, Billy, and maybe orange, and I'm just going to let it mix. Okay, now red. Scratching in with a uh, chopstick. Done any diagonals, so I'm going to do that. Okay, it needs something else. Dare I put a blue? No, maybe it's Van Dyke Brown. Okay. Um, yeah, I would have thought Van Dyke Brown. She would have thought. My favorite color, right? So what I'm seeing in here is sort of mini Rothko's going on. No, it's going to be white. Sorry. Got to get rid of some of that paint. I think black. You think black? Who said black? Okay, so I'm waiting till the end, okay? So now I'm kind of smudging, smearing that, okay? Okay. Excuse me, Laura. What yeah. 
I just lost you. What? The last one that you did was that had teeth. Yes, this is, I got it at the, um, uh, you know, like the 99 cent store. It's a pack of, it's for sculpting fondant, but it broke. So that's why I've got it taped on there. So it's, it's got little teeth in it. It's my favorite little tool because I can get these fine um, comb marks. If you don't have that, you can scratch them with your palette knife or. Um, uh, what is it? What is it called? Um, a fondant tool. Okay. You know, for cakes. Okay. So, all right. I have a choice here. Some Van Dyke Brown. I could I could introduce a pop of blue in there. I could do black. Tell me what you want. The brown. She wants the brown. Okay. I'm going to do one other little thing. So if I put, and I can do this directly with my paint tube, but I'm doing it with this thing. I'm dotting. Another thing you can do to introduce something that's not so angular is you do that. And then if I roll, I get these repeat dots that I really like. Okay, I can even um, scrape through those dots. Okay, all right, Van Dyke Brown. Um, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm. Okay, so this is my handmade carbon paper. I'm gonna do some drawing on there in addition to um, this rolling that I'm doing right now. Okay, so here comes the my handmade piece of carbon paper. Have to give a little thought to it before you put it down. It just leaves kind of, uh, you get a precise line, but then it's got a little fuzziness around it uh, that I like. Uh, Paul Clay actually came up with this method. Okay, I can't help myself. I got to add blue. All right. Now I'm going to finally pick up a paintbrush. Um, okay. So a damp paintbrush, because this is, this is Van Dyke Brown, but it's an open acrylic. So I can still manipulate this paint. So if I go over it, it'll become a bit, um, well, now it's lifting up, but a little bit darker. I'm going to go a little bit thicker for more contrast. So doing the thicker paint towards the end. It's 
Okay, now the blue. That brown color looks like black. Is is there? Can you tell in person that it's brown instead of black? You can. Yeah. I mean, it is. It does look very dark on the screen. But if I do more of a wash with it, which I can do in a minute here, you'll see that it's a rich uh, brown. Okay, let me see if I can do more of a wash with that so you can with that Van Dyke Brown. I don't know if you can tell. It looks brown, but it doesn't look rich. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> that's the zoom screen then. Okay, so I think, you know, I'm just being pretty spontaneous with just working in the round. Um, okay, can't help it, cobalt. So I would, you know, start with maybe three colors. Like it's going to be a warm palette, a cool palette, a neutral palette, a black, you could even do black and white. Make these small studies and then when you feel comfortable, you can go to a larger piece. 